Hi, this is Dr. Don. I want to take a bit of time here and walk you through question three and the remix for lab four. Now, this question is on regression, and it's based on what we did in rehearse two in lab four on linear regression. And the first thing in the write-up here, it gives us a code chunk to load the real data frame we created in rehearse two. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to go over to Posit Cloud. It used to be our Studio Cloud. It's still functionally the same. And here is the student name the, uh, .rmd file. I've renamed it to Lab4 Remix. You would put your name there, ideally. And here's question three. Again, repeated, is there a real linear relationship between land dot value and price in the houses in the real data frame. What is the equation of the straight line? So we're doing a linear regression. We're going to get the equation of the line. Now over here you can see in the environment we don't have any data frames yet, no data objects. So the first thing to do is create that, but I don't have a place to copy that code. So I'm going to click on the plus and the C and put in a blank R code chunk. And if I'm lucky, I still have that copied. Control V and a PC. I think it's Command V and a Mac, but you know, don't hold me to that. So I've got this in here. The first two lines are uh, loading some libraries we may need. And then the operative line that we need is this line here, 249. And it says real equal read dot delimited. Now read dot delimited is the function. Uh, delimited type file and we're putting the URL, the web address for Dr. DeVue's saratoga.txt file and we want to read it in and assign it to real. The equal sign there is another way of assigning a value like you can with the um, less than and the dash. Here we're creating the real with the single equal sign. And then the options down here, you don't have to worry about that. That's just something to make things a little bit prettier. So I'm going to run this code. And you can see now up here in the environment, we've got our real data object. And you'll need that later on. You can inspect the real by clicking on the little blue triangle there. You can see it's roughly 1,700 rows of observations on 16 variables. And here are your variables. Name there, price, lot, dot, size, waterfront, and you can scroll down to get to the bottom there, rooms, bathrooms, Senate college. So those are your variable names that you might be using, and you should always pay attention to how they're spelled, how they're capitalized. And when you're putting these variables into code, you need to use them uh, exactly the same way they are here, or you'll get an error. So let's keep moving. The next piece of code, I'm going to move this up a little bit here. We're given this, and we just need to edit it. It says model. That'll be our new data object will be model. And then we're assigning the values from a linear model. That's the function we're using, LM. And this is saying sales. So this looks like it's on YouTube marketing data. The, the database, the data object is called marketing, and we've got two variables here. Sales is a function of, that's what that little tilde sign is. You think of it as it's saying function of. Sales is a function of YouTube. That must be the number of views on YouTube. This would be sales in dollars, function of the number of views on videos on YouTube from the data, uh, the marketing data file. So we want to edit this. Now, I'm not going to show you the exact answer. I'm going to just pick two numerical variables here. Let's get living area, living dot area, and lot size. Looks like lot size is in acres. So I'm going to put those two variables in. I'm going to pause this and type those in. Okay, I've got it edited, I think, and I'm going to run it. Whoops! You see we've got an error there, and it says lot dot size not found. Ooh, what did I, how did I misspell that? Let's look over here. Should be lot with a capital S. Okay. No biggie. I will edit this again. 
and then get rid of this error and then run again. And there we go. Now over here in the environment, we've got our model object as a list of 12 things. And you can see here, it gives us the formula is living area, function of lot size from the real data frame. And remember from high school geometry, y equal mx plus b. So y would be the living area. Lot size is x, so this is m, 145 times x plus 162. That would be our intercept. So that's your equation of the line. Now what you need to do, of course, would be to edit this to put in your variables that we're interested in here, not necessarily lot size and living area. The next part, it says create a scatter plot between price and land dot value, your two variables, using this code chunk. And then, of course, you will need to edit it. Now, I've added some comments here that weren't in the code chunk. Remember, the little pound sign creates a, a let you put, create a comment to help you understand what's going on. And R knows not to try to run that as code. I said, find the correlation coefficient, R between the two variables. Now I'm going to just leave it as they had it, living area and price. And of course you'd have to edit those two variables and change out to match the two that you're interested in. Okay. And then the second part makes the scatter plot. And again, they've got the two variables there inside the single quote there, back quote, living area, price, the two variables. And then the rest of this, you don't have to edit. So if you run this, that would give you a plot, and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And you can see the first part gives us our uh, co correlation coefficient, 0 0.71. 0 0.7 is generally considered to be a pretty strong correlation, and it's positive. That means as um, living area goes up, price goes up. They go up in the same direction, and that's what we see here in this plot that as living area increases, price increases, which would be logical. So that's what you need to do. Again, you're gonna edit this to put in your two variables. And then finally down here, is the correlation strong? Remember, if it's about 0.6 or more, then it's strong. Uh, if it's less than about 0.3 or negative 0.3, it would be very weak. So you can kind of remember those. And then it says, do you think some extreme data points are substantially influencing the slope? If so, they're called influential. And you say that here in the real world, you would remove those data points and rerun the code. You don't have to do that, but I do want you to think about it and comment. For example, my first inclination here, I look at that data point. It's way out here, all by itself, that one too. And those might be influential. Words, if we took those two parts out, that line might move a pretty good bit. Um, so that's the kind of thought process I want you to go through. So I hope this helps.